I, I do think there are aspects of modern science that are substantially shaped by the fact that it was put together by Christians. Um, but could some other culture have done it at some other time is a, is a, is a, is a hypothetical question that a historian isn't really equipped to answer. Um, we have what we have, we have the history that we have, and so what could we infer from that? We can infer at least that the process of modern science is very friendly, in and of itself is very friendly uh, to Christian belief. Um, there's a number of places where I think points of contact can go further. Uh, I would suggest that, that um, uh, the fact that the modern scientific attitude, if I could call it that, I hesitate to speak about the singular modern scientific method because so many different methods are used in different sciences. But the modern scientific attitude of searching for truth about the universe through a combination of reason and experience. Um, there's a, a term that a great historian of the last century used to describe it. He called it, his name was Raya Ruikas. He called it rational empiricism. Rational empiricism. Because you need a, com a component of reason, a component of experience. That's almost exactly on the same page with the notion of a contingent order, that nature is a contingent order. It's not historically, it's not logically necessary that nature exists, and it's not even logically necessary that nature have the nature that it does. The nature of nature is contingent, and nature itself is contingent. There's an order there. How does that make sense? Well, for me, as a theist, that's kind of like, well, it's a no-brainer that that would make sense. If, if nature is freely created by a rational being, then the fact that it's a contingent order that we have to understand with rational empiricism. For me, that, 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 that's really neatly tied up 